I knew about the Shakers uh, coming into this job, what most people know, which is two things, that they made chairs and that they were celibate. The Shakers. Their official name was the United Society of Believers in Christ's Second Appearing. Their founder, Mother Anne Lee, arrived from England in 1774, two years before the American Revolution. During the next century, the Christian sect that she started became the largest utopian movement in United States history. They did believe that as you perfected life on Earth, you created a heaven in which to live. For most, the Shaker legacy lives on in the elegant simplicity of the things they created. Furniture, tools, everyday items. Some of the most exquisite walking sticks. <laughs> and you would absolutely expect the Shakers to make a beautiful walking stick. The largest collection of the movement's artifacts sits in this converted cow barn in upstate New York. That's the area where the main community of Shakers was based, the bustling mother house from which they sent missionaries to found other communities around the country. We're the first ones to make a flat room. Before, they were a bunch of straw gathered together into a cone, and they're the ones who flattened it, which made it much easier. Understanding why the Shakers made things the way they did is critical not only to understanding the Shakers, but also American history and America's future. To do that, all of these objects need a home. That's why Lacey Schutz is leading the effort to build a new Shaker Museum in the town of Chatham, New York. The entire collection is probably about 16,000 objects, uh, and then we have maybe 2,000 more objects that are archival materials, so letters and journals and books and things like that. I think that the museum can really be a place to learn about the values that the Shakers held so dear. To see beautiful objects, but to be inspired by those objects to, to learn about what the Shakers believed and what that means for us in our present moment. That's the challenge. Because even as the appeal of the Shakers' homespun aesthetic endures, what the Shakers believed and what that means today is not always clear. A lot of people make the comparison between the Shakers and the Amish. They get conflated as making craftsy, do-it-yourself, American folksy craft objects, and they're both these kind of outsider religious groups. Catherine Reckless, a professor of theology at Fordham University, wanted to understand how the Shakers were different from the Amish and why that's important. The Amish right, really are committed to not changing The Shakers were the opposite. They adopted machinery, they adopted electricity. All of those things that the Amish really resist, the Shakers have embraced. With funding from the Henry Luce Foundation, Reckless teamed up with Lacey Schutz and other artists and experts in order to explore the Shaker style through a contemporary lens. This project really came out of thinking about What's up with that disconnect between different ways Shakers are remembered and understood? It's a little bit of a joke, but it's also there's a real truth in it that Shakerism leads to Ikea. One of the loose-funded projects was a pop-up exhibit in the town of Chatham where the new Shaker Museum will be built. The goal of this exhibit was to show passers-by the remarkable religious heritage of the region and to better understand it. This shoe is actually an orthopedic shoe. It is so fashionably made. Somebody must have had one shorter leg. So somebody divides such shoe to accommodate um, another member with disability. I had no idea um, the, the depth of the social aspect of their lives and how important that was and how, um, how much it influenced the actual material culture 
you know, there's a reason that the chairs and the case pieces look the way that they do, and it's because of the Shakers' belief system and how they live their lives. Maybe the thing that surprised me the very most is how much they thought about efficiency and really even industrialism. And so when you walk into a Shaker room, right, there's this sense now to us, I think, of like, oh, this is simple and clean lines and uncluttered and not distracted with you know, all this tchotchke garbage of modern life. But actually, it was a room, let's say, designed to do the laundry of like 400 people. They believed in gender equality. Women could be full participants. They were founded by a woman in the 1700s. They also welcomed black people into the community, which this was way pre-Civil War. It was really extraordinary. Celibacy was at the heart of Shakerism from the very beginning. One of Anne Lee's first revelations was that um, men and women should not have sex and they should not procreate, and that um, the real witness of Shakerism is to witness to the Spirit of God without traditional reproduction. The founder, Mother Ann Lee, was born in Manchester, England. It was the Industrial Revolution. She came from a very poor family, and they expected her to marry, and she didn't want to get married, but she had to, and she quickly lost four children. You didn't have a choice um, whether to have children or not. Uh, except if you were celibate. So um, founding the religion on this concept of celibacy is what gave women the freedom to participate in their communities. And they had control over their own bodies in a way that women of that era just didn't have in other, other venues of life. They really offered a totally different way to think about what community was and how human beings could live together. So they were these rich, full communities with sometimes hundreds of adults and children, right, sharing space together. And so they were busy, joyful, full, and full of all the range, right, of human emotions and, and arguments and kind of um, petty competitions, right, between you know human life. They also had complete interaction with the outside world. that what appeals to us about the Shakers and the kind of design legacy they've left and that influence and the way that it keeps coming back, um, then pull, would pull people in to thinking about other aspects of their religious um, lives and also their communal lives, right? That they really offered a totally different way to think about what community was and how human beings could live together to look back and see that there was this small group of people who came here at the same time of the founding of the country, and they, they created a different path. They found a way to live in community with each other, to respect people regardless of their gender or their race or their physical ability, and that they lasted 150 years, basically, or they thrived 150 years with those beliefs. It gives me hope that there's a different future for this country.